FTSE 250 listed TRIG, the Renewables Infrastructure Group, has assets across wind, solar and also battery storage, a business which helps even out the fluctuations in power availability to the network. In terms of what the company does, it says that uh, TRIG generates enough clean energy to power 1.1 million homes, saving something like around about 1 million tonnes of CO2 a year. It's a steady dividend payer as well. And since quarterly dividends started back in 2016, the latest pout is at its highest it's ever been. The chair of the group is Helen Mai, and she joins us now uh, from Surrey. Helen, good to talk to you. Thanks indeed uh, for your time today. I want to begin, first of all, uh, about the renewable sector generally. It's becoming uh, a central strategy for many wanting returns from the market. Why trig uh, over others in the sector? Well, certainly the green um, and climate change agenda has um, increased in profile over the last year, and I think we'll continue to do so. Um, as you stated, um, Triggs a very good dividend payer, um, and we have stated to the market that we um, certainly intend to pay no less than the dividend we paid this year, which is 6.76p next year. Um, but I think our key differentiator uh, from others, perhaps, is the portfolio diversification. As you correctly said, we're in wind, solar and battery storage, but it's onshore wind and offshore wind. Um, we're um, also in all the four nations of the UK. We're in Germany, Sweden, France and Ireland. Ireland. Um, so we have good portfolio diversification and um, one of our key strengths is um, to enhance the value of our portfolio um, by, with our operations manager ensuring that we sweat our assets to generate as efficiently as we can. And we're also key um, to ensure that we're a responsible investor too. Uh, it's not just the green energy agenda that matters to us, but we want to do well on the social side uh, with helping the communities in which we work. And also we're very strong on governance too. So the ESG environment, social and governance agenda is important to us too, which I think is becoming very important to our investors. The, the sector's not without its critics, of course, um, for both forms of power, both solar and wind, a, a blot on the landscape, the interference of wildlife. At best, um, it has an intermittent source of, um, of electricity. How would you describe uh, the future for the sector? Well, green energy is very much here to, to stay. And this government um, has become very green. And indeed, the recent energy white paper um, sets out a huge green agenda, everything from green hydrogen to electric vehicles um, to decarbonising heating and transport, which is essential if we're going to have a zero carbon future. That doesn't mean to say that um, other forms of energy generation aren't important, of course. Um, but wind is very much here to stay and certainly in the offshore sector, which Trig has invested in quite heavily over the last couple of years. The UK is a world leader in, in offshore wind um, and we have a prime minister now who said that he wants to, us to continue in that agenda. So indeed, our most recent acquisition with Trig was um, taking a share in East Anglia One, which is an offshore wind farm newly constructed. So there's big opportunities for us and the green agenda is, is certainly here to stay. I don't think it's going to go away in the UK or in Northern Europe either. Well, well, let's pick up on that point and take a look in some more detail about what the government's um, uh, uh, targets are. Um, my, my understanding is that they've got something like an ambitious target set out, I think in December it was, of a 68% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by the end of the decade compared to 1990 levels. Is that a realistic target, do you think, for someone that's in the sector? Is this achievable? It's going to be stretching, in my view. Um, and as I, I said earlier, I think one of the key areas is going to be decarbonising transport and heating. Um, and there are new things like demand side uh, response management, you know, generating energy when you need it. So um, renewables and what Trig does in the wind and solar sector is just one part of a hugely complicated energy story. Um, and we're going to have to get all parts working together. Um, I think as far as Trig is concerned, it's really important that there's a lot of new wind and solar being constructed. Um, we're obviously able to get involved in some of the construction. We can have a small percentage of our portfolio in construction. But the key thing for us is there are good assets there to buy um, so that, you know, we have increased our portfolio over the last few years quite um, rapidly. And hopefully we'll be continue to do so and help this green agenda really happen. 
You, you mentioned the recent purchase, East Anglia One. I want to ask you in the context of Trigg's uh, business model, um, you, you bought, uh, this is a stake, I believe, in an offshore wind farm. Does the board prefer joint ventures and, and partnerships or are the big returns really in the 100% own product uh, projects, the projects that uh, you manage and, and take advantage of? Well, I think it, it's both. Um, certainly in these offshore wind farms, they are huge. And Trig is probably not at the stage yet where we can actually take 100% share in. Uh, and therefore we will work with partners. But partnerships are very key to us, be it the partnerships between our two managers, Infrared and Res, or the partnerships we have as investors in various wind farms um, or with developers. So I think it's a mixture um, of all sorts. Um, but uh, indeed, when in offshore wind, it is key for us that we we, we do have partnerships because we're not really big enough to take a, a slice of a, a full offshore wind farm on our own. Nor, in fact, my, would our shareholders perhaps want us to because of the size of the risk of the investment. We don't want to have too many eggs in one basket, if you like. To, um, so it's good for us to have a very uh, large but diversified portfolio which balances the risks. And of course, one of the other advantages I know in the sector is the fact you've got government subsidies. Um, these are, though, I believe are time limited. Is that right? I think at some point, I think you've got to price in some sort of withdrawal from the government subsidy that you're receiving. How does this work on the business? Well, at the moment, about 75% of our portfolio has subsidies. And indeed, that goes down to about 60% over the over the next few years. So it's still for the next few years, we do have a large uh, put slice of the portfolio that has subsidies. But you're right, these are being phased out. Now, if you look at Sweden, for example, we have a large wind farm, one of our biggest onshore ones in Sweden. There is no subsidy support there. But you can, uh, the costs of building have come down. The, the wind turbines that um, are there are much higher. So the generation is better. There are good energy contracts. So you can still make good returns on a completely non-subsidized uh, um, wind uh, farm. So, um, and I think the key thing in all of this is efficiency and cost coming down because um, indeed the recent uh, onshore wind farms in the UK have been built without subsidies. Indeed, the government has now said they will bring subsidies back for onshore wind. We have yet to see what those subsidies will actually be. Um, but obviously then they are now encouraging um, of onshore wind with that subsidy regime. Explain more as well about what's happening about the funding of the company because our understanding is that there's a strategy of uh, purchasing short-term debt then you sell shares uh, to pay that debt down at a later date. Why not just sell shares in the first uh, sell shares in the first place to raise the money? Well, well we, we have done that in the last couple of years, but the, the, we have just raised um, a new 500 million uh, revolving credit facility. Um, and that allows us, if we have the credit facility there, if we have new opportunities that come along, we can move quickly. We can draw down on that facility and then we can raise the money um, afterwards by issuing shares. So that shows that if you have a bit of a blip in the market, for example, when COVID struck, all shares were really hit, our share price went down, it came up pretty quickly again. But if we'd been trying to raise money for an asset acquisition on that at that moment, we wouldn't have been able to do so. So the revolving credit facility gives us the flexibility to, to have the money uh, um, immediately available. I'm really pleased on this new facility that we have just raised, uh, which is a three year facility, is that um, we're one of the first um, ESG linked Sonia facilities. Sonia, as you know, um, uh, replaces LIBOR and um, we will incur either a premium or reduction in our margin and commitment fee based on performance against sustained against <laughs> defined sustainability targets. Um, too much to say, all of that, <laughs> too many long words there. Um, but, um, so that if we power more homes um, with green energy, we pay a less commitment fee or margin. If we uh, give more um, to our communities by way of um, funding, um, again, we pay less on the commitment fee and margin. And yeah, there's also a metric in there on health and safety. So we've really built ESG into our debt facility, which um, shows that, you know, this isn't just a nice to have. It's a real business need to have sustainability metrics in your business performance. So I'm, I'm hugely excited by that. I'm very grateful to the banks who've, who've you know, worked with us on this. 
And of course, this ESG element means it uh, now comes into a lot of uh, investors who want to play on this renewables and environmental uh, sector, if you like, this new sector. Let me just bring up a share price chart. And I want to declare at this point that I'm a, 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 an investor in the business. I know you as well, Helen, um, have a, a relatively sizable chunk of shares in the business. Um, this is the share price chart over the last couple of years. You can see this big spike lower. And I think that was really that reflected pretty much every single uh, share price around the time of the break of COVID. Uh, but it did snap back very quickly. 126 pence. What do you say to potential investors about the level of the stock of where we are at the moment? Well, we've always traded at a healthy premium over our net asset value. Our net asset value is currently 113p and our share price is well, high 120s. I haven't looked at it today. So there is a healthy premium um, for that. I think um, investors should look to our dividend. We've always paid an increased dividend every year. Uh, we've now been going seven and a half years. Um, yes, we are at a slight premium um, to um, our, our net asset value, but we have a, a good track record. Um, and um, I, when I go around and see the institutional investors, um, they often complain, oh, it's a bit too expensive for us to buy. But I think it's probably uh, people are rather happier that we are at a premium than at a discount to our net asset value, which shows, you know, that the stock is popular. I would also say to potential investors, we are genuinely 100 percent green. Um, and we're also genuinely, um, the, the ESG, the environment, the social, the governance criteria are absolutely core to us. Being a responsible investment is part of our DNA. It's not just a nice to have, it's there through our entire investment philosophy. Just one final question. What about the outlook? How's the rest of 2021 looking for TRIG? Well, um, I'm positive. For TRIG, we've said that we anticipate we certainly won't pay a lesser dividend in 2021 than, than 20. Uh, we've signed up three new um, big deals at the back end of 2020. We have a very good pipeline of deals um, to come. Um, we have this new credit facility that I hope we can use. Doesn't mean to say it's easy. The um, chasing assets has become more difficult um, because green assets are very popular. A lot of people want to buy them and we're certainly not gonna buy them if we can't generate the returns out of them. But I'm very positive um, about the whole renewables agenda in this country and Northern Europe. Um, I think we Brexit shouldn't make too much difference to us. Um, and we do hedge a lot of our euro returns, so that gives some um, comfort to investors. So uh, I'm cautiously, cautiously optimistic for 2021. Uh, I'm very positive about Trig and its credentials, and I'm very hopeful it will continue to grow as it has done in the past. Helen, look, thank you so much indeed for your time uh, explaining the the current situation for Trig. And uh, joining us there from on the line from from Surrey, this is the uh, chairman of the Renewables Infrastructure Group, uh, Trig, which is a 250 listed company here on the London market. For more videos from us here at IGTV, join us on Twitter at IGTV and subscribe to our YouTube channel.